Today we'll be doing something very special. Uh, for our commenting, we're supposed to be talking about media, but we want, we want to really focus on uh, news media. And we have three very special guests joining us today from Trump University who we will be interviewing. Their names are Jack Goff, Anas Rammer, and Fat Ho. And we really hope you enjoy. So our first question to you guys today is, do you think news outlets are honest with us in the way they construct their news? I definitely believe that the media aren't always with us in the ways they construct their news. For example, uh, one thing I've learned at Trump University is that uh, news are constructed based on their newsworthiness and their news value. No, news values aren't honest uh, with the way they construct news. Uh, no, because the way they portray vegans in the news is um, not the way we actually are. Yeah, boy! Well, news values are how news value determines whether the news is worthy or not. Yeah, boy! It's time to stop! For example, there are many, many different uh, news values, such as frequency, amplitude. There are an abundant amount of uh, news values or criteria that's used to determine whether something is worthy or not. For example, a news value would be uh, personification. Some, it has to be a news that really hits your emotions. Something like a dog getting killed. Yeah, boy! Stop it. Get some help. Or Syrian refugees. Or perhaps like elite people. People who are famous that you actually want to know more about on the news. You very smart. Yeah, some I know are uh, amplitude, cultural proximity, and unexpectedness. So amplitude is when a news has to be of sufficient size for it to be considered newsworthy. And uh, cultural proximity is when the news has to be close by for it to be considered newsworthy. And unexpectedness is when something happens out of the ordinary. So let's say if Trump got elected president. The only news value I know is um, fruits and vegetables and um, protein supplements. Those, those are the greatest news values. Sometimes you gotta stay. Welcome to my mine. We are mining diamonds. We don't gotta stray. Involve breaking up the text and image into its components and assesses the significance of each element and how it would have been different if other signifiers were used. So, syntomatic analysis asks us to consider the ways in which different signifiers interact with each other to create a desired impression. Syntomatic analysis definitely can be applied to news. For example, uh, news articles you'll see pictures and pictures will always create an overall impression and each signifier can create that desired impression that the news outlets want. For example, if they're shaming Trump, they'll choose a picture that specifically makes Trump look bad. That will make all the signifiers lead to that desired impression. Whether it could be Trump yelling or screaming or his wife not holding his hand with them and you put it with a headline and then boom. Um, yeah, it definitely can. Um, an example of that is like this banana. This banana and me holding this banana while in this interview shows that I am a vegan. Like my long hair shows that I am a vegan because only people that have long hair are all natural. Bias is having an opinion or attitude on a topic based on your personal viewpoint. One bias that I learned at Trump University is bias by headline, and it's when a writer constructs a certain headline that conveys or creates a certain impression. <laughs> uh, so an example of bias by headline is uh, Trump bombed Syria or missiles save Syrian civilian lives. And both, both examples are of the same topic, but they give different impressions. A bias in the news is bias by selection and omission. And this is where, uh, news outlets will pick and choose what they want to put in and what they want to omit. For example, uh, you will see this a lot in uh, Fox News where they will constantly talk about uh, climate change as if it's not there. 
omitting every fact about climate change and selecting the own selecting facts that only support the fact that climate change is not there. A bias in the news is biased by statistics and it shows how news outlets will downplay or over exaggerate statistics to make news more newsworthy. An example of this is from one of my European history classes that I'm taking as a minor where back in the American Revolution the Sons of Liberty um, were in a gunfire where five people died but they over exaggerated it saying it was a massacre and this shows bias. I think that media is very important and I definitely suggest everybody to take this course. Media is always around us whether it be social media, news media or any type of media and it's important to know how to not just analyze but how they analyze and how they influence us and so uh, there's definitely more than just the news media that we talked today and uh, definitely we suggest, I personally suggest everybody to take the course and learn all that we didn't talk about today. There's so much more and media is great. Wait, this isn't about veganism? Uh, what we're about to show you right now is, uh, is the incident at United Airlines. Sir, you really need to leave. Uh, I am doctor. No, we're overbooked. You need to leave. I can't. I have doctor. I am doctor. Oh! 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 I want to go home. <laughs> Was this supposed to make me feel emotions? Only vegetables make me emotional. Yeah, boy! Behind the scene, BTS, Big B, the duck outfit's coming out. Miss Perry, this one's for you. Thank you. Um, social oh, media sure. in our lives. Social media is constructed in many different ways. Continuity, <laughs> continuity. My name is Ruin Silva. <laughs> Hello, my name is. <laughs> Hello, my name is. Hello, my name is. <laughs> Damn it, I was serious. <laughs> Stop him, man, please. Okay, just keep it going. Yeah, my eyes are closed. Okay. Hello, my name is Anas Rammer. And today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to fucking laugh, bro. <laughs> Chill. Hello, my name is Jack Goff. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jack Goff. <laughs> Come on. Hello, my name is Jack <laughs> <laughs> Government rules the state. Government rules the people. Democracy, people rule the government. That's how it is. And it should be communism. Should be communism. Vladimir Lenin should have won. The Bolsheviks should have won. I'm telling you, they should have took over the Soviet Union, made it for workers only. I'm telling you, Russia would be different. The world would be different. Communism. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I know so much history. I know everything. Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks. I'm telling you, they went to war. Vladimir Lenin and Stalin. I'm telling you. <laughs> 